Hey guys, and welcome to part two of this Death Watch Codex review. I um, in this video, I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to take too long going through everything because there's a lot of stuff to cover, but I will kind of go through everything that's not the veteran. So we'll be looking at the, the Codex specific formations, the new units, including the HQs, as well as the relics. Um, so, you know, we will start, I think, with the, the overall formation for the Death Watch, which is the Black Spear Strike Force. So I will... Let's have a quick look at it. Um, so it's up, it's all the way up the top. Um, we won't go into too much, spend too long on it because it, it seems more complicated than it, than it is really. Um, the kill teams in the in the um, Death Watch uh, formations are pretty, even though they kind of, they seem like there's all these different types of kill teams, all that really changes is their doctrine. And their doctrine gives them basically re-roll wounds in armor pen against a different type of choice, just like mission tactics. So where mission tactics affect your hit to hit roll, the doctrines affected a wound roll or, or armor pen roll uh, against specific unit types. So all these different kill teams don't really, aren't comprised differently. They just have a slightly different doctrine. So it's surprisingly simple. All the, you know, that we really have in a Black Spear Strike Force is your one core choice and a core choice can be just one unit of veterans. It can just be a one kill team and that's it. Not one unit of veteran, one kill team. So it's very, very simple, can be very, very compact as well. And the command benefits are very minor as well. So we can see you get your reroll re -roll of a warlord trait and you also get um, to change the army's mission tactic an additional time, which is pretty good as we discussed in the first video. But most importantly, what it does is the Black Spear Strike Force gives all non-vehicle models deep strike. So kill teams can deep strike without needing, um, you know, their uh, a, a drop pod and things like that. So it is adds a lot of flexibility to kill teams because it gives confers deep strike to things like bikes and librarians in power armor that wouldn't normally have it. But at the end of the day, um, if you have an expensive kill team with lots of different composite kind of units in it, is it really something you want to be bringing in from reserves over multiple kill teams? I, I kind of think the answer to that is no. I think kill teams, if you've got that many points wrapped up in these units, you don't, you can't afford to be failing reserve rolls. You can't afford to be waiting uh, for them to, you know, pay off. And you don't really want necessarily to deep strike and have them all clustered up, ready to be, you know, pie plated in the following turn. So. I'm a bit skeptical about this whole for, this whole formation. Um, I think that, as I've said here, I think army-wide deep strike is strong, just like in, say, a Legion of the Damned detachment, but it's also a very slow way to deliver your, um, your army. It kind of relies a lot on having another alpha strike to distract, and it also needs kind of reserves manipulation and accuracy and things like that. You'll be probably looking for things like servo skulls. You'll be looking for, you know, uh, comms relays and stuff like that to try and manipulate your reserves to get them in ASAP. Um, so I'm not a massive fan of this, to be honest. I think some people rate it. I just think it's a little bit a little bit slow. But if you do want to field kill teams, they kind of go hand in hand. If you want to field a lot of kill teams, you will be doing it via Black Spear Strike Force. Um, anyway, I think what we might do is actually look at the kill teams now. Um, so what kill teams effectively are is a composite of... We can see here, let's have a quick look. So the most basic kill team is the Aquila kill team. Um, you can see that a kill team is comprised of a unit of veterans. One or more choices from the following list, librarian, terminators, vanguard veterans, and bikers. And they all form a, a single unit. I, independent characters that are part of that cannot leave it. So the librarian, for example, cannot leave. Um, and then capped out at 10 models. So formation may not consist of more than 10. So you might guys might be trying to work out how you can fit 10 models, you know, or how it's going to work uh, to have, you know, units of Vanguard veterans, units of bikers and Terminators join veterans to only form 10 models. The reason how it works in Death Watch is that the new units the Terminators, the Vanguard Veterans, and Bikers, the units of these can now be taken in units minimum of one. So you could, for example, have five Veterans, and then you can have one Librarian, one Terminator, two Vanguard Veterans, and one Biker. So you can form a composite unit 
with single models of all these kind of different unit types that form one unit. And that's interesting, as I've kind of said, because of the kind of special rules that exist in those separate uh, different unit types now. So Terminators obviously have two up armor saves, which is quite good to, to bring in that reliable kind of two up armor save, five up involved to tank. They also have Fearless. So that's an interesting rule that's conferred. Bikes, they bring Jink. So they can the pseudo kind of invulnerable saves. They can Jink for four up. Oh, sorry, three up actually, because they have skilled rider. So I should say that actually. So they have the three up Jink. Um, and they also have split fire. And split fire is a rule that means that your kill team can shoot, um, you know, one weapon somewhere else. So it can drop, shoot a melter somewhere and it's plasma and, and cyclone missile launches somewhere else. Um, but it also means that when it comes time to assaulting, what you can do is shoot all your firepower at one unit, save for maybe one grenade. You can shoot one frag grenade at another unit, and then you can assault the unit that you shot the frag grenade at. So it effectively means that your army can, your, your, sorry, your kill team can put all its firepower into one enemy unit, obliterate the enemy unit, and then throw one grenade somewhere else and assault the other unit. So it gives a lot of extra uh, you know, you, what would you call that? Utility and, and kind of um, just, you know, value to units. So split fire is an incredibly strong rule that bikes bring. So if you're making a kill team, you're going to always want to have a bike in it unless you're deep striking it via a drop pod. But because of the, the black spear um, strike force, you don't necessarily need drop pods to bring them in. Um, then you've got Vanguard veterans and Vanguard veterans bring you uh, heroic intervention. And the new heroic intervention in the Death Watch Codex does not require the whole unit to have that special rule. Just one Vanguard veteran in a unit confers heroic intervention, which means that they don't get penalties for disorderly charges, which is pretty significant. But also very powerfully, they get to reroll charge range and they get the weight, the, the same kind of mechanics as fleet. You can reroll both dice or just one dice when you charge. So if you roll a six and a one, you fail your charge, you can keep the six and reroll the one. So the Vanguard veterans are amazing at giving extra charge reach to your unit. They also have, as we know, cheap power weapons um, and jump packs as well. So they can also extend your charge range by jumping up to the front of the unit to, to shorten the distance between you and your opponent's unit. So Vanguard veterans, really good in, in, this, uh, in the context of kill teams. So now that we've kind of talking about kill teams, um, let's go and actually have a look at the new units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, let's start with the, the units in the kill teams and actually have a, a brief look at their unit entries. Um, there's not really too much that has necessarily changed. So with Terminators, Terminators is an elite's choice. Stats are the same. They are 40 points per model, so they haven't gone down in cost like their tactical brethren in, in, in Codex Space Marines. But they do obviously have Fearless, as we've mentioned. They can be taken in units of one, which I find intriguing from a perspective of a, of a combined arms attachment, being able to take them as in elite slots as just units of one. And they can all of them can take heavy weapons. So any Terminator may upgrade to heavy weapons. So you could have a unit of five Terminators with five assault cannons or five Cyclone missile launchers, which is really interesting. And furthermore, they can combine their assault options as with their tactical options. So you can, you know, have a unit of assault Terminators with some Cyclone missile launchers in there as well. You can have, you know, a unit of uh, assault Terminators with some melter gun fists as well. So they can drop down, melter some stuff and still have an assault option as well. So very versatile Terminator units. I think they're very interesting. I think it's a good good sign ahead for Terminators. Maybe maybe this is something that might go forward into other codexes. Um, now let's go forward. The Dreadnoughts haven't changed. They've just got mission tactics. That's the only change. Transports haven't changed. Their Razorbacks have lost Laz Plaz. That's the only thing they can't do. Um, Corvus Blackstar we will, we will come to soon. Vanguard Veterans, they are a little bit more expensive to have special ammo. It's worth noting now that the Terminators actually did not get special ammunition on their Storm Bolters, which I think is a little bit of unfortunate oversight. Uh, it doesn't really make sense that Terminators being the most elite of the of them, the most elite armor, so to speak, does not have that, that option. Um, but the Vanguard Veterans, 
three points per more per model than Space Marines, but they get uh, obviously mission tactics, they get special issue ammo, and they get uh, the heroic intervention that is um, you know done on on the basis of what you know it confers. They also get access to the heavy thunder hammer, uh, as the veterans do but they don't get their discount on the Heavy Thunder Hammer that they get on everything else. So as you can see, they get a 10 point discount on all their combat weapons. So their power weapons are five points instead of 15. Their you know, um, power fists are 15 points instead of 25. Um, but that discount does not apply to the Heavy Thunder Hammer. So I think it's a bit unfortunate because I think these are the guys you'd want to give a Heavy Thunder Hammer to in many respects. Um, but you, you, you're not going to because it's just too expensive. It's probably not worth, you know, an additional 10 points, sorry, 15 points over a power fist. So um, these guys are, are good and it's good to smatter them in your kill teams to get that heroic intervention, but they're obviously can also be taken in units of one, which is interesting. Bikers, bikers ch uh, change a lot from their Codex Space Marine unit entry. They're, they're quite a unique uh, type of biker unit. For 30 points, you get a biker with the veteran stat line. So you get the two attacks on the biker. You get special issue ammo on their twin link bolt gun, which is very, very interesting because it means that you can be scooting up with twin linked, you know, AP3 bolt guns. That's that's really cool. Um, they also, surprisingly, you can see here, get uh, power weapons for five points. So they get the same Vanguard veteran discount on their power weapons. So you can make a pretty pretty nifty close combat biker unit using the death watch biker rules um they also have split fire and skilled rider so i've already discussed how how powerful split fire is um in both the context of a kill team and a, and a death star in general um but skilled rider is good as well because they'll get the three up jink so when they're scooting up the field whether they're in a unit you know five whether you've got them in a kill team or whether they're just in units of one which is an option they can be jinking for three up, which is very good. And if somehow you can get them stealth, whether it's through night fighting or, or another means, they will be getting a two up jink. So that's very interesting as well for bikers. Um, they can also take teleport homers for 10 points, which for an army that wants to be deep striking a lot of stuff and has the terminators that can deep strike, something to note as well. Um, so that's those three new units. I think that they're very interesting in that the Terminators, Vanguard Veterans, and Bikes can all be taken in units of one. And I think it really opens up an MSU spam capability for Death Watch, which is something that I will be investigating a little bit in my playtesting. Um, now let's have a look at the Corvus Black Star. Um, so the Corvus Black Star is fast attack choice. It's a flyer. Um, it's kind of like a light Storm Raven. It's got the assault vehicle rule. It's got Ceramite, Ceramite plating like a Storm Raven. Some deficits we can see here. It's got the 11 armor rear, which is a little bit, obviously, of a vulnerability. Um, it does, uh, you know, its shooting, I think, is a little bit of its downfall for its cost. It is only 180 points, but I think for 180 points, you want a little bit more shooting than what the Corvus Black Star offers. So it does give you the twin linked assault cannon that can be swapped out for a, a LAS cannon. Um, but I think the twin linked assault cannon is a good weapon. It's got its Storm Strike missiles. We know that they're strong. Um, then it's got uh, Black Star Cluster Launcher. So let's have a look at what that Black Star Cluster Launcher does. So it's a bomb and it can be used every turn. Um, bombs are obviously very situational. They are barrage. They do have the, the rule, you know, from the center, they, they, they do have that, that barrage capability. But if you look at the stats here on these bombs, they're not great. You've got a strength four AP six large blast or a strength five AP four ignores cover small blast. So yeah, there's some flexibility there maybe to snipe out things like grav cannons from space marine tactical squads and you know, go for sergeants and, and, and you know, things like that. But the stats on those weapons just aren't powerful enough, I think to be polarizingly good. Um, they can swap their storm strike missiles for black star rocket launcher. So we look here at the stats they can shoot a heavy D6 strength 6 AP4 Skyfire gun. That's pretty mediocre, I'd say. And the other option for that rocket launcher is a strength 4 AP5 large blast ignores cover. I just don't think that... 
like that's effectively a like a bolter it's a bolter level ignores cover large blast so you're shooting putting lots of bolter hits on your opponent i just don't think that for 180 points you're getting enough value unless and i think this is an important uh, caveat here unless you're doing something with the transport capacity i think if you've got you know even something like one or two or terminators or vanguard veterans in there to at least kind of threaten you're not really doing much um i think it's too expensive as, as a fighter i think things like storm talons are just better um they can be taken in a formation uh, of three in that formation they get re-roll pen and wounds against enemy flies or fmcs um that helps obviously if you're re-rolling your pens for things like Stormstruck missiles and the assault cannon that can make them much much more effective at dealing with enemy flyers but if you're taking three of them you know you're going to be really wanting to get value out of them uh so i i just don't know if they're if they're good enough as a flyer i think the re-roll it is sorry I, I didn't mention that yet but i will go back to the unit entry i am rushing through a little bit here because i know there's a lot to cover um, they do have the options of taking two special upgrades. The Infernum Halo Launcher, which is 5 points, and the Auspex Array, which is 10. The Halo Launcher gives it Reroll Jink. Now, I think that Reroll Jink for 5 points is really good. Um, Auspex Array is Strafing Run for 10 points. That's also really good, but you can only have one of these upgrades. So I personally think you'd go with the Reroll Jink for 5 points. So that's, that is a really good upgrade. Being able to take like a, you know, re-rollable four up or three up cover save, depending on, you know, you know, what, whether you've got stealth or not. Um, and obviously when I say whether you've got stealth, I'm talking about specifically, uh, you know, night fight, but it's very unlikely you'll be getting a night fight save on this unless you've somehow got this, you know, jinking on a landing pad or something like that. Um, but I just, while the, while it's very robust, I just think that if you're playing Death Watch, you're not playing Death Watch for this type of gunship. I think this, you know, it's it's specialized. It's an assault vehicle. It's quite good if you can, you know, push a couple of Vanguard veterans, bikers, or, or, or Terminators out of it. But if you've got a whole um, kill team in the Black Star, that's a lot of points wrapped up in this in this vehicle. Um, there's a reason why people, you know, don't. Well, some people do run Storm Ravens with whole Death Stars in them. But I just think that the, the delay on that Storm Raven making an effect on the game is a little bit too much. Um, so I think the way to run these things, if you do want to run them, is using them as a gunship, but having a very small assault unit inside of them. You know, something as little as just one Terminator or two Vanguard veterans inside of it, so that when you, you're you going around the field, you have the threat of being able to going to hover mode and, and launch an assault unit out. Um, maybe two or three Vanguard veterans is what you'd be looking at. Maybe a couple of bikes, I don't know, but something to give you an assault capability out of it. So that is cool. Um, with the new Death From The Sky supplement, the Black Star can be used to give you the plus one or minus one reserves if you have more flyers in reserve than your opponent. So you could kind of see the Corvus Black Star as also as a way to get reroll, or not reroll, plus one, minus one reserves while it's off the field. So that's also valuable if you're planning on deep striking a lot of Terminators or something like that. You might feel like having the plus one reserves is necessary. So that is that is definitely a consideration. The last new unit that I want to discuss um, that's got any real, that's changed, you know, that, that's got a real bearing is the, is the actual Watchmaster. Watchmaster is the kind of chapter master equivalent for the Death Watch, and he is priced appropriately. He's pretty expensive, but he does have that Chapter Master stat line. So he's got four attacks, you know, two up save. He's got inbuilt uh, Artificer Armor. Um, he's got Iron Halo, all the things you expect from a Chapter Master. Now he's got two pieces of, of war gear that are unique to him. Only he can have these in the Codex. I won't go and have a look in the unit entries because I know exactly what they are, but we've got the, um, the Guardian Spear. Now the Guardian Spear is a two-handed, you can see it here, it's a two-handed staff uh, kind of thing. It's plus one strength AP2. So it's like a, it's a, it's a um, power axe that's two-handed, but it is at initiative. So he's got initiative five, so it's, 
He'll be striking at strength five and initiative five, pretty good. It's also got a special rule called block, which means that when you're hit, when an attack targets the Watchmaster and hits him, he gets to pick one of the attacks that hits him and try to block it. What he has to do is roll higher than the to hit roll that you've chosen to try and block. So if someone hits him, and because he is weapon skill six, almost everybody's gonna be hitting him on fours. So if your opponent rolls a four to hit him, you can say, okay, that four that you just rolled, I'm gonna try and block that attack. And then you have to try and roll a five or a six. So you're kind of getting a five up invuln save before you even before your opponent even rolls to wound on that particular hit. So it's normally going to be a five up invuln or a six up invuln, depending on what their their lowest hit roll is. So I don't think it's particularly good. I think it's interesting. It's good against enemies that have a low volume of attacks that are very strong. So for example, if your opponent throws a Dread Knight at you and they're hitting you at strength 10 with a Dread Knight, being able to block a Dread Knight's attack is obviously extremely powerful. Uh, things like that. That's a very good mechanic. But if you're just blocking chaffish attacks, it's not very relevant. Um, the Guardian Spear does have special ammo, so he can shoot out a couple of Vengeance rounds with that, which is pretty cool. Um, and also, the Watchmaster does have the Master of Tactics rule, which lets you change your mission tactics in additional time. So, I think if you're running a CAD and you don't have any of the benefits such as the Black Spear Strike Force change, you might want to run a Watchmaster just to be able to change your mission tactics once, just to give you that ability to, to, to kind of leverage across once you've dealt with you know, all your opponent's HQ options. You might want to say, okay, now I'm going to deal with elites or whatever, vice versa. Um, so that's basically, look, we've looked at all the new units now. Uh, we've looked at the new units, we've looked at the Strike Force and the way that kill teams work. Um, I will now have a look at the Relics the relics aren't particularly impressive, but there is um, one you know that is specifically good. So I'll just kind of go through them quickly. You got the Bane Bolts of Rivarixia, just gives you an additional type of um, special ammo shot on a pistol. That's just a kill shot, instant death on a six to wound. Not very good. Um, it's actually not on a pistol. Like it, it can apply to all the special ammo, so it can apply to a bolt gun or a bolt pistol. They've put it for stalker pattern bolt gun, but I don't know how. A Stalker Pattern Bolt Gun model can get that. Um, then you've got the Beacon Evangelist. That's really good. That's probably the highlight. Um, that relic has got friendly units do not scatter when they deep strike so long as the first model is placed within six of the model bearing the Beacon Evangelist. In addition, once per game, the start of the, any friendly movement phase, the bearer can use the Beacon Evangelist to teleport his comrades to his position. When he does so, remove one friendly unit that is a Death Watch faction from the board, even if it is locked in combat. They then immediately deep strike within six of the bearer using the rules for deep strike. So then, then they accurately deep strike as as that's the rule above. So you can basically at any point during the game accurately bring one of your units over to your model with the bear, beacon and jealous. That's really powerful. It can be used on something like a land raider. It's got a lot of flexibility, and of course, without you know um, that ability is really strong. But so is the core ability it has which is just acting as a homing beacon that does not need to be at the board on the board at the start of the turn. So if you're drop potting down lots of Death Watch, you can drop pod down a unit with a Beak of Angelus first, and then your other drop pods will be accurate after that, that are coming within six. So I think it's pretty nifty. I think it's got a lot of value, um, but you know it obviously depends on how you want to use it. I think it, it's got a lot of utility with allied units as well. Um, then you've got the Dominus Aegis, a model equipped with the Dominus Aegis does not, if it does not move in the movement phase, its unit gains a four up invuln save until the start of your next movement phase. So that's doesn't strike too much uh, effect to me just with mono death watch, but if you're using something like Gate of Infinity, um, that's really good because Gate of Infinity, you're, you're not moving in the movement phase, you're moving in the psychic phase. So you could theoretically just gate around with a four up involved. So that's pretty cool. I think that's interesting. Then you've got the Osseus key. Osseus key is a clavis. Sorry, and a clavis is a, is a piece of war gear that I did not mention that's actually on the Watchmaster. And that piece of war gear gives uh, walkers and vehicles, so enemy vehicle models, negative one weapon skill, ballistic skill, and initiative if they're within six of the model with the clavis. 
So it's really only hates on walkers. It doesn't really affect normal tanks too much because a normal tank only really utilizes its, its ballistic skill in its turn so it can just move away from it. Um, so it just, it's basically an anti-walker um, type of war, piece of war gear. The Osseous Key is a clavis. In addition, if a model equipped with the Osseous Key attacks a vehicle or building, the roller dice um, to reserve, um, once its attacks have been resolved, to determine the effect. So it can suffer an additional glancing hit or penetrating hit. Um, it's okay, I don't think it's great. Pretty mediocre. Thief of Secrets um, is just an AP3 sword, so to speak, that when you wound a model with it, uh, it the weapon learns its weaknesses and any future attacks made by that weapon against the model that it's learned its weaknesses of wound on a two up. So it's pretty slow, it's a very slow weapon. If you, for example, wound a Storm Surge, then you get two up to wound against that Storm Surge. I think it's too slow. I can't see it really people wanting to use that. The last um, relic is the Tome of Eteclides. Now that one is a, basically, a, a, you know, it lets you change your mission. It doesn't actually force you to change your mission tactics. It means that the unit that has the bearer of the Tome of Eteclades can pick an additional mission tactic for his unit to use for that turn. So if you've got, for example, you know, mission tactics anti-elites, on the start of a turn you can say, okay, I'm using the Tome of Eteclades to give my kill team anti-troops as well as anti-elites for that turn. So you can drop down, you know, roast a troops unit, but your army maintains its anti-elites mission tactics. So I think the Tome of Eteclades is pretty good I think it's got a lot of utility and a lot of lists will try to include it into a big kill team. Um, so that basically rounds out that um, part of it. So basically that is uh, the coverage of what I wanted to discuss. Um, I haven't discussed, well, you know, when I was talking about new units, I mentioned the flexibility of Terminators, bikes, and Vanguard veterans being fielded in units of one. Um, I'll quickly mention it, but I won't go into spend too long on it. Um, you can actually take the Death Watch Overkill models as units of one, as elite choices, you know, in or fast attack choices in your Death Watch CAD. So, for example, you could take Idric Citrax as an elite choice in a Death Watch CAD. Now, he is a Raven Guard Vanguard vet, but as you can see, he's 10 points more than a Van vet, but he gets two Lightning Claws, so that the, he pays for the Lightning Claws, but then he gets Stealth. And he gets Raven Guard Chapter Tactics for free, okay? But he loses Mission Tactics, so that's a, that's a deficit you have to work out whether you want it, you would want. But he's available. The Blood Angel is available as well, but he's pretty bad, so we won't spend too long on him. Um, Garen Branatai, I think, is the standout or one of the standouts. He's twenty points more than a Terminator. But you pay for the you pay for the heavy flamer and the auxiliary melter on him, so you, you're just paying for that war gear. But what you get is you, you do lose mission tactics, but you get master crafted on your melter gun. So instead of just re-rolling ones, you get to re-roll everything, all hits on one and two, and you also get master craft on your power fist, and you get the flame craft rule of Sally's. So you get re-rolls to wound and you get the 4-up FNP vs Flamers. So you get all of that, those extra bonuses for free. So I think if you're gonna take, wanting to take MSU Terminators, always take Garen Branatar because the value is there. Um, and then even more of a value, I think, um, buy is Jitek Super Eye, who's the white scar bike. Now, he's 10 points more than a bike, um, but you get for 10 points, you just straight up get a teleport homer. And in my list that I've written, which I'll go into soon, I've taken terminators. So if you're taking MSU terminators to drop, you want a couple of teleport homers in your list. He's giving you one on a mobile platform. Um, so he, for 40 points, you're getting a bike with a teleport homer. Then you get a power sword, um, which I think, you know, it's, it's good to have a, you know, be running around with an AP3, um, power sword. He also gets... Um, in addition to, you know, split fire and stuff like that, skilled rider he already has, he also gets hit and run. So you've got this kind of individual model with a power sword and hit and run. Those rules are free in addition to the teleport homer. So he gets the rules and a power sword for free. 
Um, and he's also got the the um, plus one strength with Hammer of Wrath. So I think this guy is really good. Um, if you're not going to take bikes, I'd still consider taking GTX Super Ionic CAD just because of the utility he's bringing you as an individual model. So um, that pretty much rounds out the individual models. Um, so if you are considering, you know, taking a few of these in the MSU form, do consider the Death Watch Overkill named versions of them. So guys, that rounds out my analysis of the, uh, you know, the, the different elements. I didn't spend too long on the kill teams. I think the kill teams are interesting. Being able to throw all those composite units together is strong, uh, but unfortunately I think that the way that they're fielded in the Black Spear Strike Force is too unwieldy. Having all these expensive kill teams of composite, you know, lots of Libby's, Terminators, bikes, and veterans in units, it's just too slow to deep strike them in. Um, you're gonna be wanting to drop them in drop pods. And if you're dropping them in drop pods, say with five or five veterans, five or six veterans with one or two Terminators, if you're dropping those in a pod, yes, that's good because the Terminators can tank, but you're losing OPSEC, you're losing the objective secured rule, you're losing the ability to combat squad. So I think that the kind of optimal road that the Black Spear Strike Force takes you to is basically you're at kind of a CAD again. You're at the way in which you would play a CAD. So I'm just gonna, as a, as a predictive kind of um, at stance say that I think while the Black Spear Strike, Strike, Black Spear Strike Force is, is interesting and, and it's got some strengths, I think Death Watch will be most successfully fielded in the, in the CAD form. So, um, and, but that's, that's as mono Death Watch. I think if you want to play them as allies, taking a single kill team and adding other ICs to it, think people like Drago, etc., and running a big Death Star is probably the most, um, powerful way to run a kill team. So if you do want to run a kill team with all these composite units, then you'll probably be thinking about running it as an ally with other ICs in it to really boost it and really get use of these special rules like Heroic Intervention and Skilled Rider. So anyway, guys, that rounds out my analysis of the rest of the codex. I'm going to move on now and actually go through this list I've written. Um, thanks for watching and see you in part three.